Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1 for Student at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. This is the first of actually a three-part lecture, which we're going to introduce the idea of the derivative. Formally speaking, the derivative is the limit of a difference quotient. Now, in this video, the first part, lecture 16, we're going to introduce... Well, in this video, we'll talk about the tangent line, but in the other videos for this lecture, we'll also talk about the so-called velocity problem. We'll be computing limits of difference quotients to see uh, from a geometric or physical point of view why we would care about that. And then in the few, in later videos, we'll talk about why these are actually derivatives and therefore why we care about derivatives. Now, to motivate this from a geometric point of view, let's switch over to the graphing calculator. So you see the picture of the unit circle on the screen here graphed using Desmos. Now, for a circle, a so-called tangent line is a line which intersects the circle at a unique point. As you can see illustrated right here, the, the point in play, the point of intersection between the line and the circle is just a one single point. There's just the one point. We call this a tangent line. All right. This is in contrast to a so-called secant line, where a secant line is a line that intersects the circle in, a, in two different places, right? So you have one intersection on the top and one intersection here on the right. So a secant line has two points of intersection and a tangent line has a single point of intersection. So in this, in this video, we wanna talk about tangent lines of a curve. You know, that is to say the graph of a function. Intuitively, the tangent line to an arbitrary curve at a point on that curve should touch the curve at just the single point, let's call it P, and not at any points nearby, uh, as indicated by the curve itself. So let me take a look at what I mean by such a thing. So consider the following curve, right? So this is just a parabola, right? In which case, if we were to talk about a secant line, a secant line of the parabola, it should be a line that essentially hits the curve at two different places. Now, I do recognize that with a, with a parabola like this, it could be that curvature of the graph eventually comes down, and it could be that this intersects in, you know, maybe three or more places. Uh, what we mean by a secant line here is that it's intersecting the graph at two points, you know, far away from each other. A tangent line, on the other hand, is going to be something that we can see right here that, turning off the secant line for a moment, a tangent line ideally should only hit the graph at one point. It's just it's basically kissing the graph. And again, admittedly, the curvature of the graph might cause it to intersect somewhere else. But the idea is, locally, it's intersecting the graph in only one place right there. So formally stated, what is a tangent line? A tangent line of a graph which that graph will be given as y equals f of x. The tangent line at a point, um, we'll call it a comma f of a. So this right here is our point of tangency. So we'll call it p right here, a comma f of a. This is our point of tangency. So our tangent line is going to touch the function just at this single point p, which a just represents the x coordinate that we're trying to find the tangent point at. And then f of a, because it's a functions graph, the y coordinate is determined by uh, the function relationship f of a right there. So the tangent line to the graph y equals f of x at the point of tangency a comma f of a is the line through this point whose slope is given as, well, I'll elaborate on the slope in just a second. When it comes to a line, we can always describe a line using the so-called point slope form point slope form of the line. In which case, this would be given as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, where in this situation, the coordinates x1, y1, this represents a specific point on the line. As we're trying to construct tangent lines, we will use the point of tangency as these values. So x1 will be a and y1 will be f of a. So we have the point we want for this line. So to finish the equation of line, we need to know the slope. That's the hard part of finding a tangent line. Now, of course, if you have a line in point-slope form, it can always be converted to slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We can find that out later, but we were going to start with the point-slope form. We need to know the slope. And so that's the question at hand right here. How do you find the slope of a tangent line? Well, the slope of the tangent line, which we'll call it m, this is going to be the limit as b approaches a of f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So let's investigate this expression for a moment. 
okay? So when you look right here, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, this is something we have seen before. This is what we call delta y over delta x with respect to the interval a to b. That is to say, well, I mean, I mean in expanded form, this is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This is our so-called average rate of change. Average rate of change. Which the average rate of change, it, well, I mean, as the name suggests, it tells you on average, how does the function change from x equals a to x equals b? And more important to the question we have about tangent lines right now, the average rate of change measures the so-called slope of the secant line, the line that passes through a comma f of a and the other point b comma f of b. So this blue box right here, now it became a white box, this box is the average rate of change. It's the slope of the secant line that goes through x equals a and x equals b. Okay, now what we are doing in this situation for this slope of the tangent line is we are computing the limit as B approaches A of this slope of a secant line. And we claim that'll be the slope of the tangent line. Written in a slightly different way, this is equivalent to saying the limit as H approaches zero of F of A plus H minus F of A over H right here. And so the idea here is if if H is the difference, right? If H is the difference between uh, B and A, that would imply that B itself is just A plus H. So instead of focusing on two different points, this parameter H is representing the distance between the two points. So you have this fixed point, X equals A, the point of tangency, and then you have some variable point, this parameter B that slides. Well, if the distance between the fixed point and the, the sliding point is H, then you can rewrite in the following way. This is a form we'll use a lot more in the future. In this video, as we're focusing on slopes of tangent lines and secant lines, we'll prefer the more traditional slope formula for this. So to illustrate this point, let's consider the function y equals x squared plus two, which is just the standard parabola that's been shifted to above the x-axis. You can see the x-axis down here. So we just have a good looking parabola right here. And so let's consider finding the tangent line at the point negative one comma three. So in this consideration here, our a value is going to equal negative one, then f of a, that is f of negative one, is going to turn out to be three. And you're looking at this point right here on the graph. So if we wanted to find a secant line that goes to that point, well, we'll just find the line. We'll do the algebra for this in just a second. We're going to take the point negative one comma three, that's our point of tangency, that's, that's our fixed point. And then we can take some other point over here. At the moment, it's 1.416, and then it's corresponding y coordinate 4.005, right? You know, we could take any value we want. We could take x equals one, we could take x equals two, which is a little bit off the screen. Again, this, this point over here on the right, we consider a slider, right? So this B point can move around. It's the A value that's going to remain fixed with its corresponding Y coordinate. So as we slide B around, we get all these various different secant lines with all their various slopes. You can see how this changes in real time here on the screen. So as I bring B closer and closer and closer to A, you can see this on the screen. You can start to see that our secant line is approximating a line that's going to touch it at just one single point, okay? And so we bring it closer and closer and closer. And then at a moment, you notice what, what, what just happened. The line disappeared. At the current moment, you'll notice that B is actually equal to negative 1. Negative 1 was our A value, right? So currently, B is equal to negative 1. A and B are equal to each other. So this is the moment where B is actually touching A. And the line disappeared. And we'll and I'll show you just a second as we look at the algebraic properties of this thing. Uh, is that when B touches A, the limit of the secant slope, the, the limit of the average rate of change actually becomes the function, well, it becomes the form zero over zero, which is undefined. And so even though we take the form zero over zero, the limit of the tangent, uh, the limit of the secant slope will still be well defined. I'm just trying to illustrate to you here that as we bring it closer and closer, it starts to approximate something, although we can't allow it to touch because then we'd have to divide by zero and that's not a number, right? And so 
if we turn off the secant for a moment, what happens when they touch is we actually form the so-called tangent line, this line of the curve that just touches us as one single point. And notice our orange curve, right? When B is far away from A, they don't at all look like each other. But as you bring B closer and closer and closer to the A, to the A you see that these lines become almost identical and they would converge. The secant line converges to the tangent line uh, when B takes the limit towards A right there. So let's consider this exact same problem from a purely algebraic point of view. Let's consider the graph f of x equals x squared plus 2, like we saw a moment ago. Let's find the slope and equation of the secant line when x equals when it goes from 1 to 2. Right? So remember, negative 1 was our fixed value we considered a moment ago. Let's consider some alternative value x equals 2. All right. So we first want to find the slope m. If you're finding the slope of a secant line, this is going to be the average rate of change, delta x over delta y, as x ranges from negative 1 to 2, which will have the formula f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1, for which we're going to evaluate the function at 2. So we get uh, 2 squared plus 2, and then we subtract from that negative 1 squared plus 2. This is a, sits above 2 minus negative 1, which is it's a double negative. You get 2 plus 1 right there. And so we're going to end up with 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2, which is 6. You're going to get negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2, which is 3. And then the denominator turns out, in this case, to be 3. So you get 6 minus 3, which is equal to 3 over 3. This is going to simplify to be 1. The slope of the line in this situation is a 1. So using the point slope form we saw on the previous slide, right, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, let's use the point of tangent c here, x equals negative 1, the y coordinate turned out to be 3. We're going to see here our line looks like y minus 3 is equal to 1 times x minus a negative 1. Simplifying the right-hand side, you'll notice that times by 1 won't do anything. And if you have x minus a negative 1, it's going to be x plus 1. So you get 3, or y minus 3 is equal to x plus 1. If we add 3 to both sides of the equation, our equation will then be in slope-intercept form. We get y equals x plus 4, which is then the equation for the secant line from negative 1 to 2 in slope-intercept form. Coming back to our picture we saw previously, let's turn off the tangent line. If I slide b over to b2, uh, and I'll zoom out a little bit, you can see that right here. Uh, this line, its y-intercept is in fact 4. We can see that very clearly. And what about the slope? Notice if I go up 1 over 1. Yep, that's another point on the graph. This is the correct function we see right here, the correct secant line. Let's now consider finding the tangent line with its tangent slope, as we saw previously. And let's consider the tangent at x equals negative 1. So like we saw before, the slope of a tangent line, this is going to be the limit as B approaches A of this uh, average rate change delta Y over delta X on the interval A to B. Or more simply put, we're going to take the limit as B approaches. In our case, our A value is negative 1. So we're going to get the limit as B approaches negative 1. We're going to take F of B minus F of negative 1 over B minus negative 1. And so what is, what's the limit, or what's, the, what's f of b? Well, because of the function, it's x squared plus 2, we're going to get b squared plus 2. Uh, I don't need to compute f of negative 1 again. I've already done it twice now, graphically and numerically here. Uh, we saw that's going to be 3. And the denominator, you're going to get b plus 1. And we're taking the limit as b approaches negative 1. Notice what happens if we just plug in b equals negative 1 right here. If you just plug that in, you're going to end up with negative 1 squared plus 2 minus 3 over negative 1 plus 1, for which when you simplify that, you end up with 0 over 0, which 0 over 0 is not a number, but we're not we're taking the limit of this difference quotient right now. And therefore, perhaps if we simplify the difference quotient before plugging in negative 1, we can still compute the limit. The limit still can exist in this setting right here. So let's, exp let's simplify the numerator a little bit. Take the limit as b approaches negative 1 here. We're going to get b squared minus 1 over b plus 1. Now, I don't like the b plus 1 of the denominator because if I plug in negative 1 for b, I'm going to get a 0 again, right? But maybe I could factor the numerator to cancel out the b plus 1 we saw in the denominator. That's something we've seen many times already. After all, b squared minus 1 is a difference of squares. It'll factor as b minus 1 and b plus 1. 
which sits above the b plus one, in which case, as we know, the factors of b plus one on top and bottom cancel out. And then we get the simplified limit, the limit as b approaches negative one of b minus one. And in this situation, if we plug in negative one, we'll no longer get that zero over zero form. We get negative one minus one, which is gonna be a negative two. In which case, then if we use that for our, slope, our point slope form, we're gonna get y minus three, the y coordinate of the point of tangency, equals the slope, which is negative two times x plus one, right? because we get a minus a negative one right there. Distribute the negative two throughout, you're gonna get negative two x minus two. Uh, add three to both sides. Then the slope intercept form of our tangent line will be y equals negative two, uh, negative two x plus one. And so this should be the slope intercept form of our tangent line, which coming back to our graph, let's turn off the secant line and turn on the tangent line. So what we can see here is, I'll zoom out a little bit, our what did we claim was the y-intercept? It was a plus one, right? Because it's y equals negative two plus one. Sure enough, we can see the y-intercept here is going to be a one, right? Zero comma one. What about the slope of this thing? Well, now I have two points on the graph. If we go down, right? So we go one, two, three, four down, two over. So our slope is going to look like negative four over two, which simplifies to be negative two. So in slope-intercept form, we have a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of one. This is in fact the correct tangent line. This illustrates to us that taking the limit of the secant slope, that is the limit of the average rate of change, produces the slope of the tangent line.